to not need banks. That's the ultimate. But as you start doing this and building this system, like your banking system, your policies will become your new reserve. You're, you're maximizing what you already have. You will no longer need to just park money, leaving it to the bank for them to use your money. These are truly custom designed and engineered for the client's needs and goals. And we can tailor these to, to fit whatever you're trying to accomplish. It just, it starts compounding as you start building this and adding more to the system and buy the next car, or pay the debts off. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, everybody, it's another week, another wealth webinar, and today we're going to do something we've never done before. We're literally going to show you how to set up a private banking system real time with a real human being, not some example, not some fictitious name, not some case study, right in front of your face. So we're really gonna focus on a couple things. We're really gonna focus on Jesse's needs and goals. Just like all of you, if you're going to set up your own banking system, if you're gonna become the bank, the most important thing in becoming the bank is what problem are you trying to solve? What is it that you want from your private banking system? So no matter who you talk to on my team, whether it's Craig or Steven or one of the many amazing money mentors, the first thing we need to know is what problem are we solving? Are we trying to get all the money back for all the cars we're buying, driving, and owning? Are we trying to pay off debt? Are we trying to buy real estate? Are we going to become a private lender on privatemoneyclub.com? What is it that you want to do? Once we know the goal, we can drill down to the next level of saying, okay, how much do you want to do? What is the amount you want to save? What thresholds do you want? Because these policies are very flexible. When we set up these specially designed and engineered whole life policies, which becomes the funding vehicle, the machine we call it, that you're going to run your money through for your banking system, the one thing we always need to know is how much do you want us to build this machine to hold? And that's going to be your savings. Some of you might say, well, I want to save $300 a month. Some of you might say, I want to save $300,000 a month. There's no right or wrong amount. There's just the amount you want the ability to put in. And not only that, some people have money sitting over on the sidelines for a project. Like Jesse, I know, buys a lot of real estate. We'll get into his story in a second. So he might have money just sitting in an account waiting for the opportunity. So what he would do is he would change one thing. That's it, folks. Everything we teach is involving one change, and that is where his money goes first. So he takes that, that money that he's got just sitting on the sidelines, puts it into, and I'm going to preface this, a specially designed an engineered whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company that pays dividends. Because if I just said, puts it into a whole life, I got a bunch of people like, oh, hold on a sec, Chris. Hold on, guys. Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, and a bunch of other gurus said, that's the worst place I could put money. That's high priced, super big commissions. You guys are making all the money and I'm getting nothing. I know, I know what you're thinking. The policy your broke ass brother-in-law tried selling you last week. Yep, that's probably the case with that. He's probably looking to pay for his Corvette in one policy with you because he doesn't know how to design it. It's all about design and engineering. And you're going to see that firsthand. I prefaced that because that's what we're going to show you. We're literally going to peel the curtain back, kind of how I did it in the video, how to design an IBC policy updated on YouTube. Well, I did this there, but we're going to do it real time with Jesse. And then we're going to give you some samples that Craig took some time to create to show you that no one's the same. There are people, and, and I love how he does it. It's like this generational difference where people want to put money in just a little bit, where people want to put a lot in, where people want to kind of customize it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There is only your way, your goals, your worthy idea. And all we're going to do is just show you the path on how to take back control of your money. Now, real quick, before we get kicked off, and I always ask this every single wealth webinar, I know we always get a bunch of newcomers, a bunch of people that are here for the first time. So how many of you are here for the very first time, never been to a wealth webinar? Put I in the chat. Let's check this out. I love seeing this every week because it just shows how many new people we are able to help. And every one of the folks that are, that are here for the first time, they're here because something piqued their interest. They want to learn something new. So I always go back to Will Rogers' quote. And Will Rogers says, the biggest problem in America is not what we don't know. He says the biggest problem is what we think we know that just ain't so. So I want to give a big shout out to every single one of you, all 132 and counting. And I want to say I'm, I'm proud of you, but more specifically, I want to say you should be proud of yourself for being here because you are doing what 
the 5% do. The wealthiest families in the country and in the world do. You are giving us your time, your energy, and you're putting an effort to learn something new. And I promise you at the end of this webinar, you will have learned something new. You will have seen something if, you, if you're brand new that you've never seen before, but you've always known about what whole life is, but you're gonna see a whole nother side of how the wealthy families use this. Those wealthy families, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Morgan Stanley's, Walt Disney, Ray Kroc, Doris Christopher, Warren Buffett, the politicians, the dude even uses this. I can keep going, but it's not important who has used this, it's important what it does for you and what problem it solves. So real quick, I just want to kind of take myself off of speaker and I want to just show you the, the awesome team we've got here starting right up in the corner. What's happening, Mr. Snaggy? Hey, good um, good afternoon. Good morning, West Coast. Everything is uh, is good, man. This is this is great timing right now with everything going on in the world and the economy and, and just all the hecticness. I mean, every aspect of our lives that we can take back control and understand what's going on and have power over it instead of just giving that power away to other people is 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 very important right now so i'm excited like you said we've never done this before i think it's gonna be really cool we got some examples we'll build a real life case study with J jesse here and i'll uh, put some links in the chat box you know if there's anybody else on here that likes this and and wants to do this for themselves our money mentors are standing by they're ready for you guys they are some of the best training in the entire country for designing and building these policies the right way to specifically this is the important part to specifically meet your goals your money problems your situation this is not a cookie cutter every single policy we design is different every single one of them just like a snowflake and, and so that's what this is all about so i'm excited for this today all right and craig Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. And uh, Craig Genny here, part of the Money Mentor team, and also work quite a bit on tool development and just proving out how the process will work with different scenarios. So if you, let's say you want to pay down debts, we have a tool called Debt Blaster. We can kind of show you what's the benefit if you want to be able to invest. So what we're going through today, I just want to reiterate, we're getting into the tool that's used for this, this process. But do not forget, it's the process is really the important thing about what do you do with your money? Where do you put it? And why are we doing this? But just like when you build a house, you know, you don't want to go through and build a house with a, you know, a hammer that doesn't work well. We want the best hammer when we're building that house. Just like what we're going to show today, we want the best tool for you to be able to pay down your debts, to invest with, you know, buy your cars, whatever it's going to be. So like Stephen and Chris have already said, this is really cool because we've never done this before. You're coming into the kitchen. You're going to see us chopping up celery, putting it in the pot and stirring it up. And we're going to make a meal out of this. So anyway, back to you, Chris. Awesome. Well, no, it's not back to me yet. I want to give Jesse a chance <laughs> to tell everybody who he is. And, uh, you know, he's kind of the star of the show today. So Jesse, just take a moment and just explain to the audience who you are and uh, what you hope to get out of today. Awesome guys. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor and I'm excited. And yeah, this is, this is a really, really cool uh, event. Um, I've been funding my, my own banks for a few years now before I met Chris, I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. Holy crap. Someone else gets this. And, and then I realized, Oh no, 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 that doesn't get it. Like, like Godfather on this. So I'm super pumped to be talking about setting up like another policy. I'm an investor. I spent 15 years as a mortgage broker. I'm a realtor, I'm a real estate coach and I uh, have a cool program. We help people get homes that can't get financing through the banks. And we help investors make a lot of money by kind of combining being a landlord and being a flipper all at once without the headaches and hassles of doing swinging a hammer. Cause I can't look at these hands. They don't swing hammers uh, <laughs> and having to deal with tenants, toilets and trash. So we call it hybrid investing and our company's unbankable. And uh, I'm just like you guys, I'm just trying to always keep as much of my money as I can, grow it and, you know, do cool things with it, right? So yeah, there's a, there's a few different things that, that we could do with it. We're getting a new vehicle. And so I'm like, hey, that'd be kind of cool to have this policy be paying our payments for, for me and for us with that is, is an idea I've got. But we've already got about, I don't know, 80 or 90K running through right now a year in our banks that we have right now. We've got some for our kids and whatnot too. That is an awesome use case. And, and the funny thing is folks, I want you to know that, and Jesse can, can tell you this, we didn't rehearse this. 
We didn't even talk before this. We asked Jesse for just basic information, like how tall, you know, nah, well, I was going to say how tall. Which I sent is, over five minutes ago. So this is, this yeah. is live guys. This is legit. So we don't know yeah, where this I is going to go. We didn't know what his needs were. Now we kind of know a little bit about them. So we didn't want to do the spoils of kind of doing a rehearse thing. We wanted this to be real for all of you that have been around this campfire. And for all of you that are here for the first time, this is raw. And we are literally going to tackle this. Craig is going to literally be just kind of designing and engineering, you know, as we're doing this. So be patient with us because some of this stuff is an art form. It's kind of like McDonald's, right? You know, McDonald's fries are made with potatoes. They're deep fried and they sprinkle so salt on them, but that you don't know the recipe. So what Craig and all of us know is the secret sauce, the recipe. And that is what we don't give away. I give a lot of it away on YouTube, but you never are going to know exactly how we create these policies because that is an art form. And that is what we're going to do for Jesse today. But before we do that, somebody had mentioned a disclaimer. Yes, I'm terrible about giving disclaimers today, but I'm going to share this. This is just the legal disclaimer. Chris Noggle, Private Money Club and Money School does not endorse or recommend any, any third party financial services or products presented in these webinars or live events. In some circumstances, Private Money Club will receive monetary compensation from these third parties in exchange for allowing them to market their services or products in our forums, which we are not doing today. We don't have anyone doing any server marketing or anything. Investments contain financial risk and you should evaluate any potential investment carefully and consult with a qualified professional such as attorneys, accountants, certified financial advisors before making investment decisions. Also, just because I got a, uh, a hater on one of my posts one of my funny Instagram posts, I do want to let you know that what we do with these specially designed and engineered policies is not an investment. Matter of fact, it involves zero risk. It is guaranteed. So when people are like, oh, I can't believe you're investing in a whole life policy. Oh, I'm glad you said that because we're not, because whole life policies are not investments. Thanks, you dumbass. Anyway, that's my hey, Chris, only square Chris, word today. Also over in the chat box, uh, Jesse and his business partner are going to be joining me on Money Club Mondays February 26th. So I put a link, uh, I, I guess it's coming Monday actually. So I put a link over there in the chat box. You can register for free. It's another weekly webinar we do that focuses 100% on real estate investing and opportunities all through the private money club. So check that out also. Good. And just quick shout out to Freddie. He says, my baby boy might be born today or tomorrow. So congratulations, everybody. Right, Give him a big shout out. Freddie is going to be a daddy. So congrats to you, buddy. I love, love, love hearing that. We got another guy on our team, uh, Tyler, who may right now be at the hospital with his wife uh, having their first child. So it is baby making time for a lot of people out there. And if you're not, then get going, folks. It's a lot of fun. Get making babies because we need the population in this country to go up so we don't end up like Japan or China where there just ain't enough folks to keep the economic growth going. So go out there and make some babies. Anyway, that's it for the disclaimer. Let's get back to some infinite banking and let's go into it. Craig, I'm gonna turn it over to you and I want you to kind of just lay out you know, a little bit of the, the lay of the land for what we're gonna be talking about today. Yeah, so typically what, what's going to happen, you know, Jesse and I haven't talked yet. Nice to meet you, Jesse, by the way. And, uh, you know, typically, you, we're, we're, yeah, typically we're, we're going to meet on a strategy call and Jesse's going to have the opportunity to share with me about his background, what's important, what he's trying to accomplish with these policies. So we're always starting with what are you trying to do? We're starting with information about your cash flow. What assets do you have? So we don't need to go into all that detail right now, but that's typically what you're going to find out on a on a strategy call is us learning more about you and what you're trying to accomplish. Now, there's a lot of information that Jesse could be sharing with me about his family, you know, the importance of of say death benefit um, or maybe the lack thereof of death benefit. So there's a lot of ingredients that go into this policy design. For, for the audience, there, there's going to be some terms, and I, I think it might be worthwhile to talk about these terms before we start jumping into the, the building, but for our community, have you guys heard of MECs? Have you heard of the splits, like the 60-40s, the 75-25s, PUAs? I think there's some terms that we might want to just touch on real briefly. You know, when we're doing policy designs, there's a IRS regulation called a modified endowment contract we're working against or with. 
So Chris, what was it back in the eighties is when this, this mech thing came into, I think it was around 85 or maybe 1988 earlier. actually. Um, 88. you know, and that was back during, you know, times when oil prices were crazy oil tycoons were making billions and the, the, the number one choice for all these billionaires was insurance companies and whole life. And they would take giant chunks of money, dump it into a whole life policy, one single premium, and it would all grow tax-free for the rest of their life. I mean, come on, I couldn't get much better than that. <laughs> the IRS caught wind of this and was like, oh, guys, 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 you're just like us. But like, I know we didn't put this in the tax code, but you're screwing it up. People know about this. It was just on CNN. Like, you can't do this. So now we got to slap your hand and put some rules and make it so that now whatever money you're putting in there has to be supported by a death benefit. And well, now we've figured out really cool ways to engineer that out as well. Yeah. So, so there, there's this thing called the modified endowment contract. And Jesse may tell me, Hey, I want to put this much money into a policy and, and I want to do this much dump in and, and Oh, by the way, I want this certain split. So all of those things will kind of guide us down the right path of how do we design this? Because if Jesse doesn't have enough death benefit, the IRS might say that's a modified endowment contract and he has to pay taxes on it. Well, we don't want that. So we'll turn some dials to, to get that set up. So modified endowment contracts, MEC will be one thing you hear. Now, inside of a, a traditionally designed whole life policy, so let's say you walk down the street to Prudential and you walk in, say, yeah, I'd like one of these, these specially designed whole life policies. First off, they won't know what you're talking about. And if you want a whole life policy, what they're going to do is say, well, Jesse, how much do you want to put into this, this policy of yours? And let's say Jesse says, I want to put $10,000 a year into this policy. That full $10,000 is going to go into the base of the policy. So it's all going to be spent for death benefit. So when when you hear the Dave Ramseys and the Suze Ormans and all these people out there that do not understand what we're doing, they're somewhat correct in that a traditionally designed whole life policy has almost no cash value for the first two to three years. So I'm sure Jesse's sitting here going, I need cash value out to go buy this car. So if I design a policy for him that has no cash value year one, no cash value year two, and maybe a fraction of the amount of money in year three, he's not going to be real happy with me. I mean, you probably don't want that policy, do you, Jesse? No, no, that wouldn't make sense for, for this specific goal. Not for something else it might, but not for this, right? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm, totally. So so what we end up doing is we're going to take Jesse's premium deposits, we call it, and we break that into two pieces. Some of that's going to go into the base because we need to buy some death benefit. And base is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just we want to have a fair split of base and something else called a paid-up additions rider. This is a special writer that goes into the, the policy that allows you to have high cash value right away. So we're basically going to carve out that 10,000. Some of it's going to base, some of it's going to PUAs. Now, you may have watched Chris's design videos. And if, if you have, just put in the, the comments just so I kind of get a glimpse of how many people have actually watched Chris's design videos that talk about the 70s, 30s, the 75, 25s. Just kind of curious. So we've got some folks out there. Yep. Good, good, good. So we we will get people like sometimes I'll have a Jesse come to me and say, hey, I want a 90-10. And this is what I want to do. They'll come with prescriptions. It's almost like going to the doctor and say, this is my condition. I want this pill subscribe or prescribed to me. Well, that's great. But we need to look at the whole picture because if you want a 90-10, we might have one, we may not be able to do it because of the MEC rules, or two, we might have so much term in there, it's just not going to accomplish the goal. So we just want to make sure we have all of that ironed out. Okay, so we have MEC, we have base, we have PUA. Uh, we talked about having to add term riders. So some people ask, what is this term thing? I have a term policy. Well, inside of the whole life, we can put a term rider in there to satisfy the IRS MEC rule to allow us to be able to get the amount of money in we want in this policy. So if, so Jesse, are you thinking of doing a dump in or um, just you know, going straight premium? I was thinking like a 5K dump in and I, I was thinking 12K, but maybe we'll do an 18K policy per year and a 5K dump in up front. Okay. Hey, Craig, can I ask real quick, you know, Jesse, what, like I, I love cars. Like what kind of car are we buying? We're like, buying a, uh, a new Lincoln Aviator. Nice, those things are yeah. sick. 
I always yeah. like to like visualize things. I'm just very visual. And I don't know how many of you in the audience are, but like when you're thinking of like something you want, like I get crazy about it. Like for the longest time I had this, this poster of this Porsche on my wall, it was a black Porsche. It had the black mm -hmm. and with silver ring rims and everything about it, tan interior. I knew every color, every line. The only thing I added in my mind are the little fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror or the mirror in the car. So like, yeah, I the like dice. visualize it, you know, cause that then when it becomes real, you're like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Well, we're going to go with the Navigator because we got a lot of stuff for all of our short-term rentals and we're hauling it. We're like, maybe we don't need that big of one. So we'll just downsize and get the Aviator. But then we went with all the bells and whistles and the massaging seats and the air-conditioned seats. And so now it's the same thing. But yeah, that's what we're rolling once, with. Once a luxury, now a necessity, right? You got to have it. Got to have the massaging seats. I mean, and air conditioning in the summertime, you know, underneath, come on, got to stay cool. Isn't it crazy to think, sorry, Craig, but isn't it crazy to think that no. it, it really wasn't that long ago, maybe 20, 25 years ago, where most cars did not have air conditioning. And we were just cool with that. You rolled the windows down, you know, the, the <laughs> dog hung its head out the window, the tongue flapping. Like, you remember those days? Yeah, yeah. It just sucks nowadays. Like, you're I'm hot. Right? Here's your answer. Yeah, you never see the dog <laughs> with its tongue flapping out the window. It's like, I miss those days. Me too. God, we're getting old. Now they're sitting all well, crazy. Well, I had a... <laughs> in college, I drove a 1972 Kingswood Estate station wagon. Now, now, you talk about being able to haul some stuff. Did that have I the wood paneling on it? Oh, yeah. The fake wood That's paneling right. with the, we used contact paper because it was all stripped off. But yeah, it was, yes. it was quite the machine. <laughs> it was of duct tape and contact paper. Woo! Beautiful. Yeah, we did what we had to to get through, get through that period of life. But anyway, that's, uh, you know, that could have been financed with a, a policy as well. So... Jesse mentioned something, the dump in, we talked about a dump in, and, and I think it might be a good idea just to talk about what is a dump in, because it's, it could be a familiar or a familiar term to some, but what we're talking about there is there's a way where you can just take a chunk of money and drop it into the policy and you get about 90% access to that dump in amount. So if Jesse needed money in and out of the policy quickly, the dump in is a great way to do it. It capitalizes the policy quickly. So he dumps in 18,000. He should have about 90% of that accessible within the first 30 days. Now the premium will be handled differently. So that will be something that Jesse would do every year. So if he was going to do 5,000 annual premium every year, he would put 5,000 in year two, three, four and on. So those would be some of the ingredients and terms that we'll be we'll be using. But um, you know, Chris, should we just jump into some of the some of the designs here? Sorry, kind of playing. Sorry, I was the, on mute. Software. Yeah, I think that's probably a good way. I mean, does anyone have any questions up to this point? Because I mean, we're kind of just going through. Normally, this would be on a phone call. We're doing it live, you know, with Jesse and kind of getting deeper into what Jesse's needs and goals are and what he's trying to do. And he just wants to get all the money back for all the cars he ever buys, drives drives and owns, you know, starting with this beautiful Lincoln. So does anyone have anything before we get into it? I know Lynette's got a question, which I'm answering right now. Um, if anyone does have questions, put them in the Q&A as we're going. We'll make sure we get them. I'll even, like, if I have to, I'll stop Craig and Jesse and just kind of interject because, listen, like, none of this is rehearsed. It's not like we're going off of a PowerPoint presentation. So please interject if you have a question or something just doesn't make sense. We want to make sure you all get the most out of this training that you can. And, and that doesn't happen. If you get confused and miss something, just stop us. We Is that okay, Jesse and Craig? Can we just like, if someone needs something, can I just stop you guys? 100%. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Cool. Works for me. Let's now, do it. One of the things, one of the things, Jesse is, you know, if, if you and I were having our strategy call and at the end of that, I gathered a bunch of information one of the things I'm going to work on is what is the best insurance company that meets your goals? So we have a handful of insurance companies we can work with. For today, I just picked one. It may not be the one you would go with, but I'm just going to run through one example just so we're not going through five or six different you know, companies' illustration software. But one of the things we do in the background is we try to figure out is company one, two, three, or four the best one to go with. Hey, Craig, uh, I just want to clarify for Carlin, um, the amount, or Jesse, I should ask, the amount you're doing is you're, you're dumping in 5,000 and you're going to, you want to build the policy to hold 18,000 per year up to 18,000. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So I had that, that wrong. So yep. 5k is. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm changing on the fly, keeping, uh, keeping a set of toes. So, you know, you got it. Thank you. 
That's okay. And then, you know, Kathy had a good question, and we can actually show this, Craig. So remember, we talked about this. Um, so Kathy said, does it make sense to do the dump in? Uh, so I, I'm actually going to change your question a little. Does it make sense to do the dump in versus not doing the dump in? And what does that look like? So I think we can show it both ways. We can literally kind of modify this as we go, show the dump in and not the dump in. Uh, but I can tell you right now, mathematically, the dump in will make a big difference. I was just going to ask the same thing. So that's a great question. Yeah. Why do we want to do it? When do we not want to do it? And then Craig, you mentioned like looking at, you know, four or five different companies. What are the quick bullet point things that we should be looking at those companies? And do you have like a, I don't know, like a charter, like a teeter totter based on the goal? Like if this was like, Hey, I'm going to go buy an investment property with it. Is that totally different? We go to that company now, or if I want to, you know, do some debt consolidation, do we do something differently there with a different company? And the dump ins, I think that'd be kind of interesting to see for the different reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I would say outside of New York, and, and why I say outside of New York, New York's almost like its own little country when it comes to insurance world. Certain regulations, not all insurance companies want to do business there, but you know, since you're in Minnesota, we don't have to worry about that. But right there, if you're in New York, that eliminates some of the equation. Now, for everybody else, most of the times we're going to a company called Lafayette or One America, and, and I can just give some quick bullet points. They're both awesome companies, been around for over 100 years, consistently paid dividends, both supportive of infinite banking. Why would I go with one versus the other? Now, if, if you're trying to do a big dump in and a smaller premium on a high split, Lafayette typically will work better for that just due to the way some other policies are structured. One America is awesome. They also allow us to do those splits. They typically come with a little higher death benefit compared to Lafayette. Um, so there's there's some just some different just some different options out there. For today's purpose, I was going to just run through uh, a Lafayette design, and we can start to answer some of those questions. So what I'm going to do is just kind of walk through how I would be designing this policy for you, Jesse, and, and we can run some different variations. So we can try the dump in, no dump in, play with some different splits. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your name in here, your age, and sorry to show your age. I, I would, you know, just 24, Craig, like, like you're probably 24, 30, <laughs> 24. Come on, man. Now, one of the things to really stress in this, this whole process you haven't been through underwriting, you would be starting underwriting in the application. So I'm going to make some assumptions. I mean, you look like you're in really great health. Maybe you're going to get a better rating than standard. I just don't know. But here's the thing. Each insurance company has a set of ratings. You could be super preferred, you know, great shape, awesome health. Um, so th there's just different ratings. Let's say you were a smoker, you might get a standard smoker rating. All of these things impact the cost of insurance. But since I don't really know how you're going to be rated, we typically just start off with standard, which is where most people fall. There will be a little bit of difference in the cost of, of death benefit, but is there a significant difference in the infinite banking if you're super preferred or standard? No. I mean, it, it's not a huge difference. But that's where we're going to put you as standard. Don't take it personal. It just is what it is. <laughs> that's where we're going to start. Cool. Now, what we do is we start playing around with some of the, the numbers here. So let's say that you're going to do an annual. Do you want to do that that 18,000 on a on an annual basis? Or did you want to break that into monthly? So uh, prob you just want to yeah, probably monthly. Okay. Yep. So we can pick the different modes. So here's the thing. You can do your premium deposits every year. You can do them semi-annual, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly. Um, and, and there are some different benefits to doing annual versus these others, but you do have that option of picking which one you want to run with. And guess what? If you start out monthly and you decide at some point you want to go to annual, that can be changed. Cool. So super flexible that way. Yep. So you have some flexibility in there. So what we're going to start off with is let's just start doing some designs around your 18,000 premium. So you're going to be paying that monthly, but we're going to put that in as, as annual. Now, remember we were talking about those splits like a 70-30, 60-40, 75-25. That was all on how we're breaking up that 18,000. So now I need to give it some sort of percentage. Do we want to start with a 40-60? Do we want to do a 70-30 or a 75-25? The differences that you're going to see, 
So when we do a 75-25 versus a 60-40, what is going to be different? Well, 60-40 is going to have longer term. So when you get into the years 2025, it will most likely be growing higher cash value than a 75-25. The 75-25 will have more cash value available up front. So if you're trying to buy a car, I would tend to go with a little bit higher split initially. And then just see if we need, you know, if it if it starts having high term, we can dial that down. Is term so the first for, part of that ratio, Craig? Yes. Yeah, so the base. Hold? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So now, if we do, twenty five percent would go to base, seventy five percent would go to that paid up additions or that thing that creates that high cash. Now we could just say, you know what, this is all I need to do right now. I just want to see if it will actually work, so I can go do a quick solve. And what we're going to grab here, oh, danger, danger. We have exceeded the mech rule immediately. Ooh, we don't want to be mecking right off the bat. No. No. Bro. no. All right. I don't need those guys danger, at my house. Danger. <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We got a mech rule here. We got a mech issue. So if you're, if you're putting in 18,000 a year on a 7525, I need to add in some term now. I need to satisfy the IRS. So I can just click on this button and it allows me to add in term. I can do that for seven years, 10 years, whatever it might be. So this is the first ingredient we have to add into your policy to make sure it works. Sprinkle in so a little now I'm going to hit the calculate. Yep. Just sprinkle a little term in and a little bit of this. Nice. So up here, we see that this mech says no. So that's good. So you don't have a taxable policy here. Sweet. We did have to add a little bit of term in the mix to make that happen. And because you're paying on a monthly basis out of your monthly payment, which I got to do some quick math here. So out of the 1500 that you're putting in every month, 375 goes towards your base. This is just show. this is not an illustration, but it's just showing me a quick glance of at the end of the year, you know, you put in 18,000, uh, this is your cash value and your death benefit at the end of year one. And then we can see this going all the way to year seven. And there's a couple of things that's happening here. So this 18,000 minus the 17,710. Just so you know, I'm really bad at simple math. So I have a calculator to tell me everything. When I was in college, I could do all the complex calculus and physics, but I cannot do simple math. Anyway, that's just, that's how my mind works. I'm, I'm with you. I'm a mortgage <laughs> guy and I just go boop, boop, boop. And I've got this special app that makes me look really smart, right? So do you see in year seven, how it drops from 18,000 to 17,710? Yes. What's that, happening that term, that term went away? Exactly. Your term went away. And so the cost of that term went away. Mm. And not only that, but you see your death benefit went from 464 to 322 because we dropped the term. Got it. Okay. So that that's an that's a common thing people ask is why is this less and why did that get less? It's because our term dropped off. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between these two numbers is going to tell us that you're paying about $290 a year for that 175,000 of term insurance. And we needed to put that in there to prevent the mech. So that was necessary for this design. And then what's happening after year 10 is it's it's dropping down. The software is figuring out how much can you put in above the base. So the base is this 375 times the 12 is 4,500. So you have a little bit of PUA you can put in there, a little bit more that you can put in to prevent the mech. Now, this is not necessarily guaranteed because guess what? Our mech rules can change. Mm -hmm. And and what's going to drive that would be, let's say Lafayette starts paying higher dividends than we're illustrating here. Mm -hmm. That can impact the amount of money you put in the policy later. So this is just showing you what you might be able to get. Okay. So Chris, any, any questions? I haven't been watching the Q&A, so I don't know if there's anything we want to stop at this point and ask. Or yeah, answer. no, I, I got one. Um, you know, James Davison's on. He always has great questions. He said, would you also consider past dividend rates and direct recognition versus non-direct recognition companies? Or are those negligible and not a part of the consideration on companies' choice? I mean, I would certainly say past dividend rates are something we look at a lot. 
knowing that we're coming out of a low interest rate cycle going into a high interest rate cycle, which is going to be very favorable. And actually, I, for the past two years, we've seen dividend rates go up with many of the carriers. And I think we'll continue to see that upward trend in dividends like we have in the past, because that's studying past dividend rates. Um, and then direct versus non-direct. Craig, do you want to take that one? Because I think it's good for Jesse to understand, like this is Lafayette, which is a non-direct versus using someone like a Penn Mutual that would be a direct. You want to hit that one? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's a it's a good question. And um, something good to understand is when you start taking loans from this policy. So Jesse, if you if you took a loan after say at the end of year one and you had say ninety percent of this thirteen thousand dollar number, it'll be a little bit higher than that. If you're if you're working with a company like Lafayette that is called non direct recognition, they do not recognize the fact that that you took a loan. So they'll continue to compound your full mm -hmm. amount of your account. A direct recognition will say, well, guess what, Jesse, you took out $10,000. That's getting pulled out of your dividend calculation. Now, to be fair, some of those companies will do some interest crediting. And, and here's, the, here's the way I look at it. I call it mathematical gymnastics. They do a bunch of, a bunch of mathematical gymnastics to try to keep you whole. My preference, my personal preference is non-direct just because I know my full amounts compounding and I don't have to think about it. But that's yeah. the main difference. So I would guess most of the time we want to go non-direct. Is that usually the case then? Is there, is there a reason that I, to not go that way? Well, I prefer it and I think it's just easier to, to maintain. Now, it doesn't mean like, for example, if you went with a guardian or a pen that is direct, mm -hmm. it still works. It's just there's a couple extra steps to consider. But it's it just the math is easier and just the maintenance and, and going forward is just simpler. It's is Mutual Trust one of the companies you work with? We do not work with Mutual Trust. I don't personally know a lot about them. Chris, I don't know if you I've I've them. heard well, I've heard them used. I've never like, you know, in all the circles of the infinite banking, all the you know, the IBC pr uh, practitioners, nobody's talked about that company, which would basically mean it's not a company that would kind of be in the runnings up against like a Lafayette, a One America, or any of the big companies that we use. They, they're probably just not competitive at all. The only one I will say I've seen uh, that, that actually isn't bad is Foresters. The only reason we don't use them is they we we can't, like the Foresters aren't as good as the ones we're already doing. So it's kind of just like we could use them, but we just don't need another one when we've got you know, the best ones in the industry right now that work mm -hmm. for infinite banking. So I'm not saying it wouldn't work with that company. I just, I've never seen it. Gotcha. Okay. Kathy said, could you clarify what Mac uh, 7 pay? So she's asking what Mac 7 pay is. Um, you, you want me to just kind of hit it real quick or do you want to hit that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. It's pretty easy. So Mac 7 pay, it, it's literally seven pay means seven years. So what they did is they were trying to to stop people from taking large sums of money, just dumping them into policies and then getting tax-free growth for the rest of their life and never having to pay tax on that. So what they did is they said, okay, for the amount of deposits, premium deposits you're gonna put in, we're gonna mandate the specific amount of death benefit based on the premium deposit over seven years. So you, there's a test that the IRS has that we, we kind of just showed a second ago that will basically say, is there enough death benefit to support the amount of premium and premium and dump in that you wanna put in? And if not, we need to increase the death benefit. But with death benefit comes cost. So that's where we've gotten really creative in our design and engineering. And we use term riders to offset the cost, but still give us all the death benefit that they want for seven years. And then in the eighth year, the max seven pay has already been satisfied. So it's kind of just, we just drop the term insurance in either the eighth or 10th year, depending on funding. And, and I want to also be clear, the max seven pay is not something any of our clients ever need to know anything about outside of we have to follow IRS code because the client will never, ever have to deal with it, play with it, or really do anything with it. A lot of people are like, oh my God, I got to study this. I got to learn this. We're not going to design a policy that max. Well, and I think that's a good point too as well, Chris, is after the policy set up, can Jesse mech this policy? Well, I mean, Jesse could mech the policy, but he would be notified over and over. It'd kind of almost be like, you know, when your phone's in your back pocket and it's just going, zzz, zzz, zzz. it's kind of what it would be like from the insurance companies and also us. So how D Jesse could mech this is we'd build, build it to hold, let's just use this, 18,000 in his dump in. 
But let's say next year, Jesse wants to dump 30,000 in and he doesn't like remember there's some rules and he dumps 30,000 in. He would probably mech the policy and then he would get notified your policy is, is in a mech status. You need to take that money out. He would have to contact the insurance company and remove the money very quickly before it becomes a taxable uh, policy. And we would be notified instantly and we would be all over Jesse with emails and text. Uh, and if he just ignored us, well, hey. Welcome to uh, every other vehicle you put money in. You're going to get a 1099 at the end of the year for any growth you have. And uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yep. Pay so attention are... to your emails and texts. Breaking news, this just in. Are you sick of having your money lying around not doing anything? Well, we've got the solution for you. PrivateMoneyClub.com. Back to you, Chris. There's actually one yeah, more so good question. Definitely... Uh, Craig, before you roll on. It's just yeah. asking in year eight and then, you know, starting in year 10, is that the maximum amount you can put in? This is illustrating the maximum right now. Now that could change based on the, the MEC rules, but right now it's illustrating just the max that we can put in. So Jesse's base would be around 4,500. So we're able to put in just, just a little bit more on the PUA side. And you know, it's really important to understand, you know, with this right here, because you can clearly see it, you know, when you think of Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, and all the whole life haters, you know, they're always hitting on the big commissions. The commission on this policy is based on 4790, not 18,000. So the, the commission would be paid out as a percentage of his premium, the base premium, which is 4790, not 18,000. If you did a regular whole life, the commission would be based on 18,000. If you did an IUL, an index universal life, the commission would be based on 18,000. But that's how we design it. And that's how we give so the client gets. So it's a big deal that you understand that like that 4790, that's like the minimum that, that Jesse could put in, but it's also the amount that the commissions are calculated on, uh, which is a really unique and interesting way uh, of showing people firsthand why these have to be designed and engineered properly and if not done properly or not done transparently, the client or the agent, your broke ass brother-in-law could squeak out more commission and you may not even know it, but you would always know it because the amount of cash value you have would be drastically different the higher up the base goes. Dude, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I was about to say, so how does this look when someone's building it more in their favor versus your favor? And how do you toggle back those, those levers to do that? It's a percentage. So if you look at the 18,000, right, that's the amount you want to fund it at. So that's your max. I mean, maybe a couple hundred more than that would be able to be jammed in there, you know, because macro is always change based on dividend scales. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a floating scale, but that's a, that's your max. That's just the way you look at it. Don't put more than 18 in, but your minimum after the first year is technically the 4790. Now, as we build this and add term insurance, that term insurance would need to be maintained for a period of seven years. So that's a different factor, but the term would be inexpensive. So that's how you look at it. That's like your min, your max. Your minimum's 4790, your maximum's 18,000, but your your first year required amount is the amount you want, which is 18,000. Good question. So in the, in the design process, one of the things I, I do is I've got a spreadsheet and I've got a spreadsheet for everything. But what I do in, in terms of the design process is I... I copy this information out into a tab that does some quick calculations for me. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not really that great with simple math, so I need, need the calculators. But what I'm looking at is a couple different efficiency points. One is called the um, cash on cash. So for example, if I have an, if I have something I'm putting money into, I want to know when I put a dollar in, when do I get a dollar back? And this is just the way these policies work is that you won't get a dollar out first year. So you put a dollar in, we're getting about 76 back, 76 cents back in year one. And so what we're looking at is when do you see that cash on cash go positive? There are some things we could do to this policy to make it happen earlier. But right now in about end of year five, you've got 105% cash on cash, meaning I put a dollar in, I got a dollar five back. So now we're now we're at the point where we broke through one of the efficiency points and just keeps getting better and better. For example, look down here at year 20. You put in $4,790, yet you grew 17,647. That means for every dollar you put in, you you receive $3.68 back. That's a pretty cool banking system right there.
That's a badass banking system right there. 100%. These guys had it figured out, by the way. I took this off my shelf at the beginning, right? Yep. Had yep. it figured out right here. So Absolutely. it seems to be, Craig, I feel like when I've, when I've looked at this a lot in the, in the last few years, five years seems to be the timing of when it's 100%. Is that kind of the average? And if it was like only 60 or 70 or 80% in year four or five, does that mean it was designed maybe not in my favor as much or what would that mean? So there are some dials. So if we went back and we did a 60, 40, because maybe you wanted higher death benefit and you, you didn't care about, you know, having cash um, mm -hmm. earlier, we might push this down to year seven. We might push this down to year eight. I mean, it's just, we can, we can keep turning these up and down to create the higher cash earlier. And sometimes it comes at a cost of, say, year 25, you don't have as much cash or death benefit. If we get to it later on, I've got some other examples outside of what we'll build for you, but it'll show some of those, those differences. When my, my very first policy 15 years ago, when it was illustrated, it showed my cash on cash would be around year seven. It actually happened in year three. Dang. So these are just illustrations. So it wow. could it could happen sooner for you, but... Cool. This is just kind of one of those efficiency points. If I saw that this cash on cash was way down here at year 12, mm -hmm. I might do some things to, to adjust it. <clears throat> so, um, so I want to keep this as just kind of a, a baseline for us to compare with. So we did a, an 18 K premium on a 75 25. Okay. So let's go add your dump in or actually, before we do that, let me do this. Let's change this to a 40, 60. All right. So what is that going to do to our policy? That's 40% that's whole life, 60% term? 40% base. Yep. So 40% is now buying more death benefit and 60%. So we lowered how much we're putting into the cash value rider. Gotcha. And we, we put more of it into the death benefit. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way for me to do this is just copy this. And let's put it in um, here. So see at the end of year six, we're at 108. If we go to year six here, we're at 110%. So you don't have as much cash available early, mm -hmm. but let's also look at the death benefit. So on the 7525, I have 432,000 of death benefit. On the 6040, I have 414, 432. And it's probably because of the term. So the term is probably bumping us up. But where we may want to go is down to year 20 and just kind of do some comparing here. So let's go to year 20. So now we have 510,000 of death benefit on the 7025. And we have 587. So you see how we have more death benefit. We have, and potentially we might have more cash value here. So 372 versus 329. So what happened is, think about, we're having a race. The 75-25 is going to race the 60-40. The 75-25 is ahead, and at some point, the 60-40 passes it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now at that so point, so for every dollar you're putting in, you're getting $3.68 back? Yes. Yeah. And here, it's two eighty eight, dollars but you also have to realize we're putting more in. We're, this is the other thing to recognize we can put more in because we have more base. So if, if you told me, you know what, I want to kind of build a longer term structure, we will, might go away from a 75, 25, maybe 65, 35, 60, 40. But this is, this is the premise of the earlier the cash you take out, there's some consequence later in the policy. Now, what we're going to do is put your dump in. in. Let's go back to our 75, 25. I would suspect that that might be more in line with what you're trying to do with the car purchase. What you want to do is add in 5,000 in terms of dump in. So that's a one-time operation. You're just going to drop in 5,000. Let's take a look at it. All right. So see how we now have 23,000 going in year one. That's the 5,000. We're not doing that again. We're just putting the 18 in. But look what it did. It actually made it so we could pay. Well, we also upped our term a bit because of that dump in. 
So the dump in needed more term to prevent the mech. Because we have more term, we're able to put in more later. So we're able to put in 17,627 all the way at year 11. So let's see what that did to our efficiency. Yeah, this is really cool just to show, I mean, totally how customizable it is. And it's all about the specific goals, right? And and even different policies, right? Like I might, we could do one right after this for a different goal and it's completely different. And to go in and knowing how to, like you said, kind of build that car, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's why we always say like, there's no one policy that's the same. I mean, we do thousands of these policies and and even though like the, the percentage breakdown might be the same because we have four models for that, no policy is designed the same because there's always different dollar amounts, different dumps, different time frames, uh, And it just proves like these are truly custom designed and engineered for the client's needs and goals. And, you know, it's like, I have 11 of these things and there's not one that's exactly the same in design. Like I have well, I'm, I take that back. I have two 60-40s. I have one, which is 100% base. And, you know, I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, and then I have a variation of like, you know, 25-75s. I have one that's, uh, I think, a 15 uh, 85 or yeah, I think I did that right. Um, but they're all just varied out because they're all for different needs. You know, so every one was a little different for what I wanted it to do at that time. And I love that that's kind of what you guys are doing with this. Yeah, that's that's so cool. So somebody had asked a question earlier, and I think Jesse, you had the same question. What is the, what does the dump in do to the efficiency of the policy? So here's where we didn't have the dump in, and cash on cash was end of year five at 105 percent. We were almost there at end of year four. So when we put the dump in, in it actually bumped the the efficiency up to end of year four, we actually hit our 100%. So we have almost 80% at the end of year one. That's what the dump in does. It creates more cash available for you immediately. So you go 80, 90, 95, 100. Without the dump in, it was 76, 90, 94, 99, then 105. So by doing that dump in, what you did is you brought more cash into the, the equation earlier for you to use and access. Doesn't seem like a huge amount though, right? I wonder what that would look like, no, you know, I mean, a couple thousand versus say 10,000, you know, or, or nine, like half of it. Yeah. So if we look at, just do some spot checks, let's say at um, year seven, you've got 524,000 of death benefit and say 130 of cash value compared to 103 and 432. So, I mean, the, the dump in added what? See at the end of year, oh, I'm sorry, I was on year seven. So 124 versus the 130. So, I mean, you picked up a little bit because you have the 5,000 you put in plus some of that growth. And, and this will vary. I mean, we have some policies where, you know, Chris and I were working on one recently where there's a $300,000 dump and a 30,000 yearly premium. And we did that on a 50-50 split and cash on cash is positive at the end of year two. So, you know, I think it, that's, it, that's really why. important to hit, Craig, because I think a lot of people like they watch the video, you know, they see other people mm -hmm. talking about 90 tens. And the one thing they don't understand is like we can throw around 75, 25, 90, 10, 60, 40 all day long, but none of it matters. It matters when you actually like you're doing get into designing it for the need, because the most efficient one and we've seen this a bunch is if there's a dump in like a large dump in 50 50 has been like crushing it and you barely lose yep. any efficiency in the early years, maybe a little bit, but what you get back in the long run. I wouldn't even like allow somebody to do like a 90 10 if I could design something with more base that's very close. I, I wouldn't put my name on it because I know it's going to hurt them bad in the long run with the 90 10, where like a, a 60 40 or a policy with a little more base is actually going to be far more efficient in the later years. But we always understand in those early years, we want maximum availability of the money. So that's where the, the trick is. And that's where the real skill comes in in designing these. And you're seeing it firsthand, which I love. Yeah, and, and I'm going to do a quick plug for the three-day because Chris and I are working on something really cool, and it's it's an equipment financing model where you can do big dump-ins and then not putting more money in the policy, or you can capitalize for three or four years. There's some really neat things we're going to be sharing, but it gets into 
you know, how much, what's the, uh, what's the benefit of doing the dump in versus not. And then if you capitalize for four years and, and use it for a, a continuous model of just financing equipment, it's Nelson Nash talked about it. We're doing modern day, today's numbers, today's policies, today's designs. It's going to be so cool. So if, if you haven't signed up for the three day show up, cause we're going to do a really cool example for that. Yeah, and I was actually, it's funny you mentioned that, Craig, is I was just chatting with Dana in the thing. We were talking about Nelson and how amazing he was, and it was just like the best teacher and how, you know, he mm -hmm. kind of passed his legacy on, and now the the students, us, became the teachers, and, and now we get to take what his teachings are, which is what I'm so excited about for the three-day Money School Essentials is we get to take a model that's in, you know, Nelson's book about equipment financing and literally modernize it and literally bring it to light which I think, you know, is something we've missed all these years. We've never done it. And we're, we're going to bring it in. And it's really going to shed light on, you know, this concept doesn't just have to work for individuals. This concept works really well for businesses, financing equipment. And I can't tell you how many, you know, contractors I work with that are always buying new trucks and new equipment yeah. for their business as they grow. I mean, why not get all the money back for every piece of equipment your company ever buys and get the tax rate up? And that's the thing we're going to hit at the three day. We're going to show you how using the 179 deductions, the tax deductibility, you know, and the depreciation along with the infinite banking concept is like a double win. And, and Nelson, I know would be proud because like they didn't have those 179 deductions back then. So get yeah. your tickets for the three day shameless yeah. plug, but why not? That's ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. And just to get that foundation and to really wrap your head around it. I mean, it's like the more you learn, the more you know you don't know, but there's so much more there and why you need to be here, like learning this, doing this, digesting this, right? Asking the, the good questions. And I think it's a good point, Chris. Like even what you just said, if you just took one of those benefits versus all of that equipment yourself, right? From the interest, but you then you stack it with the, the you know, paying yourself back and then it accruing and you're just like a triple whammy. So yeah, this is dude. It, it almost incredible. completely in time, not right away, but in time, it, it eliminates your need for banks. It's like, you know, we're just, I got this bank here. That's been like wanting my business, calling my wife saying, you know, why wasn't Chris banking with us? And I, I, I told my wife, I said, because I don't need the bank. I don't yeah. need anything they have. They want to lend me money. I don't need your money anymore. Like I can finance almost everything that I need with my private banking system and say, you know, the F you to them. It's so powerful when you get to that point. Now it's taken me a decade to get here, but I mean like to not need banks and as a business owner, like to not need a bank, just think about that. Like that's the ultimate in, in my opinion. Incredible. Yes, absolutely. So there, there's one more piece, um, Jesse, I want to go over and, and you might look at this and go, you know what, I, I really don't want to be putting that 18,000 in past year eight. There, there's two important things about this. One is what I'm going to show you doesn't mean you have to or you don't have to. We're just illustrating what it would look like if you did it this way. You're going to be, let's say you were approved for this policy, you would be able to put in this amount of money if you wanted to. It doesn't mean you have to. But what I'm going to do is I want you to see what happens if you just drop down to base after year eight, meaning you don't want to put any more paid up additions in. You just want to stick that base in. Because right now you're putting in that 17,627. We have some people that want, you know, this custom tailoring, if you will, of, hey, I, I want to do this or I want to put this much in the policy. So we can get really fine tuned. Um, while you guys were talking, I pushed a, a couple of buttons. It's not really important, but what we're going to do is we're going to go in and, and just tailor this up to say after year eight, I no longer want to put in any paid up additions. Now, what I typically do, even if you tell me that, I put in $120 a year. The reason why is there's a writer. I don't know why this isn't working for me here. Hold on. If you don't pay this 120 writer fee every year, and let's say in year 10, you want to put in some paid up additions, you won't have that opportunity. So this keeps the door open to put more in if you want it to. So I'm gonna put that 120 in there just to show what, what's happening here. Now, if we run this, you've got your dump in and your 18,000 all the way to year seven, and then you're dropping down to base plus that, that PU rider fee, that's, that's it. Just, I mean, the point of this is we can we can tailor these to to fit whatever you're trying to accomplish. In the three day, we're going to be showing where you don't put any more of your premium money into these policies after year five. 
So there's some really cool things we can do with the designs. But anyway, that that's just something else we can we can illustrate out for you if you didn't want to put in any more PUAs after year seven. What we would do with this, Jesse, is is next step. If if this was kind of you and I worked on some designs and you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think this looks good. Let, let's move forward with that. We'd actually create what's called the illustration, and that's what would go a, along with your application to Lafayette. And this is what you would be asking for to be approved. And so we would go through. And this is the illustration. And one of the things I'm just going to scroll down to is the, the data table here. So this just shows you, similar to what we've been looking at year by year, and all these numbers are representative of at the end of the year, you know, what's your dividend? What's your increase in cash value? What is your net cash value? What's your death benefit? And so this just kind of gives you a picture of now with the, the dividend tables being illustrated out, if those dividends go up, these numbers are going to get better. Okay, so this is just kind of the, the, the picture of today. And then one of the things we look at is the required premium. So if we look at that base, remember we were putting 375 mm -hmm. of base. The term that we needed to put into your policy cost you $31 a month. And then there's that PUA rider fee of 10. So at a bare minimum, 416 a month is what this policy would need to support it. And even though you're planning to put 1500 in, 416 would be the, the bare minimum. Um, so anyway, I like to always look at these. And then you can always you know, look at this 375 divided by the 15. What is that? And, and this That's is good, Craig, because I know when I was starting to learn more about this, it's like, wait a minute, I... Everyone's so used to like a minimum payments, right? Like your car payment comes out, that's what you're paying. Your minimum credit card is like, oh, I only have to pay this or I can pay it off in full. But people are so used to that. But it's it's cool that you have that flexibility when you might need it to be there, right? Yeah. And and I've had some cases lately where, you know, some people ran into rough times like, hey, you know what? I need to scale this down this month. Mm -hmm. And then you could catch up later, but it just, it's good to know that this is the minimum, but you want to get in as much as you can, because that's what's going to create the growth and the, and the uh, cash value. So anyway, that's kind of where we would, we would end with the, the design is then get you in the application process. And then once Lafayette comes back and says, you know what, Jesse, you're, you're super preferred and we're going to approve you for all this. Then we go back and re- rework some of the the design pieces because you you may have had a better you know rating than standard um but anyway that's that's more or less what's in some of the the ingredients there's a lot of other things we can do with the design it's the basis of what we we typically go through this is super cool i've never i've never seen this at all like this just walking through all of it and the variables and the options and the, and the coolest part about this is like all we did for this whole thing is literally just Start with your needs and goals. Design exactly what you want to design. I mean, and just use our expertise in making it work exactly, you know, for the need and goal. But like, you know, up to this point, and somebody called it out in the Q and A's. You know, we've only talked about the policy, the product, right? Getting the machine built. The most important mm -hmm. thing is what happens next. Like with buying the car. So now you got the policy. You know, you fund it, and when you got the money, you take the loan out, you buy the car. That's where you really make money. The policy, you know, yes, you're making compounding. Yes, it's impressive how much you make, but that's not how you get wealthy. How you get wealthy is the application of the infinite banking concept. And that's that's like phase two. You know, once your policy is issued, that's what our company does is we we design that map. We design that entire system. Matter of fact, we don't make you wait till the end anymore. And this is brand new and a lot of people don't know this. We actually give you your customized report when you sign the application and do your medical. Then we're going to show you, hey, here's your policy. Here's you buying the car. And this is exactly what it looks like mathematically. And then that's when you really salivate. Like a lot of people get excited about the policy. And I'm like, why are they excited about the policy? <laughs> I guess it's exciting when you see it the first time. But really what's exciting is when you see the report of showing the policy with the process coming together to solve the problem. That it's, I don't even know what the proper word. I'm going to get it wrong. But that is the moment of clarity. And the moment where if somebody gets that far with us, like if they get their application done, they sign the application, they go through the medical, we deliver, our team creates that report for whatever it is that their goal is. And that's when they literally see all of it. They see the policy with the goal coming together mathematically. And at that point, like where they have that clarity moment, like if they didn't go all the way to the end, then there's something wrong with them. 
uh, or someone got in their ear and clearly is, is painting the wrong picture because mathematically at that point it's proven. And, and I love it because Craig has really pioneered this entire thing. And I don't think a lot of people know this. I mean, I, we are the first in the industry, the very first ever to do what we're doing right now. Like when, when I always say, you know, you're either going to take the path most follows, which is conform to what everybody else is doing or create, like literally we didn't just create and take like that path through the woods. It's kind of like, looks like that's where the deer goes. So let's follow that. We literally just decided like, yeah, let's go that way, Craig. And we just trudge through swamps and through trees and, you know, there's cougars and snakes and I don't like snakes. Anyway, I'm sorry, joking, <laughs> but like, it's what we're creating has never been done because what it does is it takes everything that Nelson taught Nelson Nash, that is, mm -hmm. you know, from a concept to a mathematical certainty, Craig, I don't know if you want to take a little bit of time and just show everybody that. Cause this is, this is really where the rubber meets the road since we're talking about cars. Yeah, and, and this is just one example. Um, I don't have, you know, at my fingertips a, a uh, car example, but we could we could do the same thing. But this is this is what we call a debt blaster report. So Jesse, think of this way: where maybe this is your car, the balance of what you owe for that car. You know, a lot of people have credit cards, they have personal loans, they have you know medical in this case. Mm -hmm. So basically, what what we're doing is we're calculating, we're taking all of that debt information, whether it's a car, whether it's, you know, credit cards, we don't care. And the first thing that we're doing really here is trying to figure out what are, what's the debt picture look like? So there's $99,000 of debt here in this person's life. This is not Jesse, this is not yours, just, just for the audiences, but this is just an example. So this person's got $99,000 of debt. And they're making debt payments of about $2,166 a month. So one of the things our team does is, and we use a policy to support this. So we're designing the best policy we can for you to pay down this debt. But what we do is we analyze those debts in three different ways. Um, you've probably heard of the snowball. You know, Dave Ramsey kind of made the snowball, the, you know, the, the you know, payments. And essentially what the snowball does, it takes the lowest balance debt to the highest balance debt and pays them off in order. There's others out there called the avalanche, which takes the highest interest rate to the lowest. There's another one out there called the cash flow index. And it basically looks at the, the ratio of your um, debt balance to your payment. And they try to figure out what's the efficiencies of your debts and pay off those lowest efficient debts first. Now, here's the fun part about this. If you're Dave Ramsey, it's always snowball, 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 snowball. Never do anything else. There's others that say it's always the avalanche or it's always the cash flow index. Always do it this way. Guess what? I don't care. We don't care over here. We just want to know what is the most efficient. So this tool will figure out, is the snowball the best way to go? Is the cash flow index the best way to go? Is the avalanche? Mm -hmm. and, so you're looking at yeah, all so of them. We, it doesn't matter. Whatever is the best. Yeah, we don't really care. Mm -hmm. um, it's just what is the best way and, and what is the best? It's the one where you're, you're paying the debts off the fastest with the lowest amount of interest going out the door. Mm -hmm. So what we like to do is we, we say, okay, Jesse, if this was your debt, if you're paying debts off, most people pay debts off where you have a credit card here at $12,000, you're putting 550 bucks a month at it. Well, guess what? When that credit card's finally paid off, what do you do with that 550? you blow it, you put it in your budget, you spend it, you go on vacation. If you continue paying debts off one by one, it will take 336 months to pay yeah. all these debts off. It's disgusting. $65,000 of interest on a 99,000, you know, $99,000 of debt. Wow. That, that hurts, right? That's now, crazy. if we just simply deploy and, and start snowballing or avalanching or using cash flow index, that's what we mean by option two. That's where you would take, mm. once the Wells Fargo's paid off, you take that 550 and add it to the 400 at the Amex and pay that and then take the 550 plus the 400 and throw it on the truck and you know just keep knocking those things down. 56 months, all that debt's gone and you've knocked the interest from 65 to 20. So pretty big step here in just changing how you pay your debts. Now, if we designed a policy for you and it was efficient and we use the policy, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the maximum loans out of the policy mm -hmm. and throw that on top of the debt at the top of the list. 
nice. we're just going to keep doing that until all these debts are gone. Now all of the debts in this case are gone in 42 months. All third-party debts gone. Wow. But Nelson Nash taught us to do what? Be your own bank. Be an honest banker. Be an honest banker. Yeah. Honest Chargers. Banker. Exactly. So what are we going to do with this $2,166? Well, for the next 13 months, we're going to put it back into your system. So in 55 months, all debt's gone. Your policy loans are paid off. And you have $38,000 in your system and a death benefit of $446,000. So... Let me ask you, if you are paying down debts, would you rather do it this way and pay $65,000 over almost 30 years? Would you rather do this way where it's gone in 56,000? Now, the, the thing about these first two options, guess what's unique about them compared to the last option? Well, you're not getting growth at, at all. Yeah, so at the end of, wh whether you do this one or this one, all your money's gone, right? All your debts are gone and so is all your money. Yeah, yeah, you have nothing else to show for it. However, if we do this one, I have $38,000 in my pocket and a death benefit of 446. So you made money and to pay off debt. <laughs> you made money to get rid of debt. Yeah, isn't that cool? And, and Almost a half a some, million some in death benefit too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, and and we've done these on car buying as well. So in the first time you buy a car with a policy, let's say you buy a $25,000 car, you might actually spend $1,000 out of pocket because the system is not completely efficient yet on your first mm -hmm. car. So you bought a $25,000 car for $1,000. That's still pretty dang good. That's amazing. This is, this is super next car, cool. Yeah, in the next car, you actually make money on on that by buying it through your own system. So that's the that's the the benefit of using this process that we've all been sharing and teaching. And Nelson Nash paved the way. And this is one of those examples for you of just yes. that that blast. It's literally game changing. And and this is just the start. Seriously. I mean, you know, it's kind of we've got this like innovation lab that we created where where Craig is, is just kind of pioneering and just like, you know, we get a client that says this and Craig's like, Ooh, I could create a, a tool to do that. And we keep doing it and, and it's just eventually just going to roll out slowly. But the one thing that we're doing is, you know, like, think about this, like a lot of other IBC companies or other, you know, agents out there, they would create this and they would, they would be like, I'm going to sell this. You know, we're just giving it away to our clients so that our clients have a better way to solve their problem and see it earlier on in the process instead of having to wait to the end and, and almost do, you know, how we did it up to this point. I mean, it's, it's worked over 8,000 times with clients, but you know, it's always been almost this blind leap of faith, right? You're, you're believing what we're saying, you're, you're trusting what we're saying, but you haven't literally seen it proven in your use case where now Craig's designs here, this, this software literally does that real early on in the process. So, the client no longer has to say, well, will this really work? Because my my you know guy I worked with said this is a scam. And now all of a sudden, like they can just say, you know, go back to work the next day, take this thing and just just got pie in the face, just slam it in his face. Here's your mathematical proof, bitch. Sorry, that's two swear words for the day. I just said I was only going to do one. But uh, it, it really changes the entire game. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think I, I always say it, right? And Jesse, you've heard me say this a million times, like, the way to success is creation. Like you want to be successful and, and it's a proven fact, you know, it, it's create. We are creating so much stuff right now that is taking monumental amounts of time and money, but we're creating so mm -hmm. that we never have competition. And if you don't want competition, just create. That's what, that's what we learned with Earl Nightingale's Strange Secret in the World, just create and you'll never have competition. So we just keep innovating and keep creating. And, and the one thing too is all these creations we're doing we just keep giving them because the universal law is the more you give, the more you get. Your success is a direct correlation to the amount you give, the amount you serve others. And and I'm saying this stuff, folks, because it's so vital that you understand these things. Like you're seeing it in person for the first time for some of you. And uh, it's only going to just, it's just going to evolve. We're just going to keep creating. Yeah. yeah. And Chris, props, one, of the, props to you, one, man. Of the, one of the things that I want to touch on real quickly too is, it was quite a ways ago in the comments. I, I don't remember who asked, but they said, if you do debts, if you pay off debts with your policy at the end of that, then what do you do? Well, here's the cool thing about it. And this is, I get really excited when people can pay off their debts and have some money in their pocket. 
but what could somebody do with $38,521? Private Money Club, Michelle wins. <laughs> so have your money you that through, you just made by paying <laughs> off debt make you more money. Snowball yeah. that sucker. So you start building wealth from the, the money that you would have given away. And what does that do for you and your family? So it's it just it starts compounding as you start building this and adding more to the system and buy the next car, pay the debts off. Uh, it just it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So can I can I throw a little curveball at you on this too? Because this policy is sure. based on me, <clears throat> twenty four year old man, mm -hmm. right? But no, this is based on me that we're we're making yep. this. But this policy, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, we could we could have a policy on a parent, on a child, right? kind of doing something similar, couldn't we? Absolutely. And I, I know we don't have time to go through all of this today, but um, one of the things I kind of prepared was some examples of a young person. So I basically said, you know, it's a policy designed for every generation. Can oh, we design sweet. policies for a five-year-old female? Absolutely. Can we build a policy for someone that's maybe just getting started in the workforce? They have 10,000 a year. Absolutely. And then maybe somebody that's in, you know, the height of their career, making lots of money, they want to, you know, juice a policy with a huge dump in with a little bit of premium. And this is kind of what we were talking about earlier with Chris, the 50-50 design. A lot of people say, I don't want a 50-50. If I show you this policy design, you would say, I want that 50-50 design because it's cash on cash positive at, at year two. And a lot of people Craig, Craig, I got to say, like, I was not a believer. Like I remember Joe showed me something similar and then you did rain yeah. and dough and you showed it to me and you said, it's 50, 50. I said, go oh, cry, cry, cry. No, no, no. We got to, we got to tighten this up to make this better. You're like, no, it isn't going to get any better than this. You need to see it. And he showed it to me and I'm just like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Sorry. I didn't mean to say that, but like, I oh, wasn't no. a believer. I didn't even think that was possible. What? So this is a summary view, but let's go to this one. This is, this is a fictional person. I've got a whole family. They're the dough family, you know, Bucky dough and rain and dough and saving dough, but this is this is a person age 45 putting in $300,000 dump, 31,000 a year on a 50-50. So 50% 50 of that 31,000 is going to base, 50% is going to paid up additions. Look at this cash on cash. Oop, I went the wrong way. Now I've lost my way here. 114% at the end of year two. What does that mean? They're putting in $31,000 in premium. Yeah. But they grew 35,000. <laughs> anyone just go walk into the nearest 10 banks in your town and go see if you can get that deal <laughs> well if you know of one let me know right That's well why, why don't you walk into the bank and just ask them hey i want you to put my money where you put your tier one money and then see if they tell you to put your money into a specially designed whole life like the bank does with bully the answer will be no and they won't even have a clue what you're talking about it's sad uh, it's really sad but that's the fact and Jesse, don't it's forget crazy. when you ask him when you ask him for that, also say you want four point seven million dollars of death benefits. That's what this policy has in it. Right. Yeah. Can you just add that on top too? Oh, you don't you don't do that? <laughs> Jeez. And can I get a side of fries to go with that or maybe a dum dum sucker? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me give you a sucker. Wow. You know, another yeah, thing too, Craig, like looking at this, like the other thing that we never really talk about, but you know, I just answered a question that kind of brought this up yeah. is, you know, we're always talking about like for an emergency fund, like every family should have three to six months in a bank account, like just sitting there for an emergency. But as you start this, not right away, but as you start doing this and building this system, like remember your banking system, your policies will become your new reserve, your new emergency fund. You will no longer need to just park money, leaving it at the bank at the bank for them to use your money because this will double down not only as an operating account as a you know whatever you're using it for but also as an emergency fund because it is guaranteed and liquid uh you just wouldn't want to consider it your emergency fund in the first couple of years because of you know obviously the you know we got to build and capitalize the banking system but i think that's a, a good point that somebody brought up yeah so chris i know we're we're getting close to time but there's one other common question that comes up do we want to cover that real quick? It, it has, a, I've got some I think we have to. Design. So I want to go through this this fella named Saban Doe, age 30, kind of at the, just starting his career. He's got about $10,000 a year to put into the policy. 
And so what I did is I designed this policy with a 70-30 split. So of that 10,000, 7,000 goes into the cash rider, 3,000 goes into the base. Now there was no term required for this policy design. So that full 10,000 is being used for base and PUA. And so what you'll see here is 10,000 is going in for the first 10 years, and then it drops to 3,000 because that's the base. You know, we've got some metrics over here. We're going cash on cash into year four. So all those things that we talked about, I get a lot of questions. And, and Jesse, I don't know if you've got the same question, but it if this was your policy and you could continue to put in 10,000, mm -hmm. should you? Would yeah. you? Should you start another policy? Should you keep this one? Mm -hmm. Right. I get that question a lot. So here, here's a policy where we're putting in the 10,000 for mm -hmm. 20 years. But the question is, should you have stopped putting that full 10,000 in a year 10 and just start another policy with say 7,000? Cause that'd be the seven and the three would still be 10,000. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to show it mathematically. And then there's other reasons outside of math why you may want to do this, but the question is, would it be better to keep adding PUAs in my existing policy or should I start another policy? Well, let's look at it mathematically. So just so everybody knows what I did on this policy. So at year 11, we're only putting in 3000. So I wanted to start another policy where I put in 7000, but I'm now if I'm at age 30 here, I'll be age 40, 41 when I start the new policy. Okay, so everyone follow. We're doing 10,000 for the first 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to compare that with continuing to do 10,000 for the next 10 years or break into another policy and do 7,000 in a new policy and 3,000 base in the existing policy. Hopefully that's not confusing, but that's what we're comparing. So here's the I new follow. policy where at age, age 41, 7,000 is going in. And then we break it down, you know, after year 10, we go to the 2100, which is the base. So basically, here's what I wanted to do. If I take the 10-year policy, the policy where we're doing PUAs for the first 10 years, so I have nothing going in, because this, this 7,000 plan doesn't even start until I'm 40. So at year 11, we've got 108,000 of cash value in our existing policy, but we're only putting in base now. And we've got 592,000 of death benefit. Our new policy has 4,777 of cash value with a death benefit of 237. So all I'm doing is I'm just adding these two to say, okay, what's the combined nature of those two policies? Well, 113 in cash and 828 in death benefit. Compare that to the policy where we just continue to put in the 10. I actually have higher cash value and a little bit less death benefit. But really what I wanna know is at year 20, what's this look like? Well, at year 20, I have 252,000 cash value versus 263. So continuing to put in those PUAs if I could actually generates more cash for me, less death benefit, 867 is a million. But let me throw this out there. Does it just always answer the question now? Always put in PUAs if you can. So I feel like there's a trick here. Does I'm not saying sense? anything. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. So here's the thing. What if, you're, what if your health changed in 10 years, Jesse? Mm -hmm. What if you couldn't get it approved for another policy? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Continue putting it in the one you have. I mean, that's going to be the first thing. Mm -hmm. But what if you are healthy? in 10 more years and you can start another policy. Why would you want to if you have room in another one? Nelson Nash talked about creating the capacity in your banking system, opening up another branch because you'll have room in this policy and you'll have some room in this policy to come on to accommodate more income if you have it. Mm -hmm. So just because this is, this is behind in cash value, does it still make sense maybe to have that other policy to accommodate money that could be coming in the future. So you may just want to think about that. And here's the thing, you don't need to make a decision until you get down to this point. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, that's the cool thing. So you don't need to think of, you don't need to make that call right now, just knowing that options there for you and, and you're maximizing what you already have. But yeah, that's, that's really, that's really cool that you have the flexibility.
One thing, Craig, that I, I had somebody ask, uh, James asked about, like, what are the actual commissions paid? Do you mind if I just do that super quick and then I'll turn it over to Stephen to kind of wrap us up? Sure, absolutely. You know, I, I know we said you cut your commission 60 to 90% on these, but I just physically like using Jesse's. And I know we, we went through a lot of variations. So folks, this was on that earlier variation he did. So I kind of just was penciling it out. Now, these are not exact, full disclaimer, like just because we were playing around with different numbers. And, you know, there's a couple of variables here, James, that you need to know about, like depending on the production of an agent, this 55% this could be higher or lower. Uh, this is pretty well fixed. And depending on the company, the renewal year, the amount of years we get renewals can vary. But let's just use baseline, like the average uh, agent out there. Base, which is that 4790, would typically pay out at a 55% commission. Okay. And that's again the one that varies. A lot of agents are actually lower than that, but that's about where they're going to be at. Uh, the commission on that would be 263450. Okay. And th that would be paid out if he was funded monthly. This would be paid out monthly as well. So the insurance companies do not advance commissions. If a, a client's funding monthly, the agent or the money mentor gets paid monthly. The paid up additions rider that we put it in, they, we get 2% on that. And, and again, that that's sometimes a little lower with companies. So 13,120 is the number I kind of just pulled off. I think it's actually a little less because of the term rider, but I went with the high. Mm -hmm. That would basically give you about $264.20 in commission. So your total commission on Jesse's policy would be about 28.9870 paid out on a monthly basis. So just a smidgen over $200 a month is what the agent would make making this. But now if you had nothing else to compare that to, then it wouldn't mean anything. So now let's compare that to your broke ass brother-in-law's whole life, or they probably are trying to sell you one of those IULs now. So let's just look at those. So a normal whole life, you would pay commit, get paid commissions on the full 18, because all of it would go to base. That At 55, that's $9,900. That would be most whole lives. If it was an IUL and they didn't really do much with design, because you can design IULs a little different, but just going with the person like your broke-ass brother-in-law that's trying to maximize commission, those things can pay out up to 120%. Watch Chris Kirkpatrick's videos on commissions on IULs. That's $21,600. Now, that's a good day in the freaking office. Heck, 9900 bucks. that's a really good day in the office. So subtract that from what we would make, 2898 minus 99 that's the amount that Jesse or any of you doing your policy would have in your cash value because the commission was reduced by the way the policy was built. So I just wanted to kind of give transparency there and just show rough numbers. They, they vary a little bit based on who was writing it in that, but that's pretty accurate. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's still like you just took the curtain and went... Whoosh. Here's what's that's up. That's what we try to do is, you know, and a lot of agents, you know, hate that we do these kind of trainings. I got so much hate for the one video, how do you design do. an IBC policy? Because yeah. people are like, why are you showing people this? Because everybody should know this. Like they just don't want people to know. But I think the more a client knows, the more educated they are, the better decision they can make. And then it just comes down to solve my problem. And if we can solve their problem, then they should ask us for their business or us to do business with them. Jesse, well, any uh, final questions on that? Here's one more thing on the commission. The thing that people don't talk about either though is, is that policy, is that policy? Like if you skip us, you don't come to a brokerage, an agent, you go directly to One America and somehow you find somebody there or Lafayette Life, somehow you find somebody there that actually can design that the right way for you, just like Craig did, which by the way, you'll never find. But let's just say you found someone that could do that. All that commission is built into it, regardless whether you're using an agent or not. So your policy is going to be exactly the same if you went directly to the company and try to skip the agent or not. So, you know, we don't charge anything for any other stuff that we've been talking about today. That's how we make our money is through that commission. So why would you not come to us, allow us not only to design it properly for you, help you create, use all of our tools that Craig's created and We've tweaked and made, made and show you the path for using the policy through infinite banking. We have our implementation team you have access to for free for life. You know, all of that is included just being a client of ours. And that's the only way to make our money is through that commission that you would have never been able to avoid anyway. So it's just one of those things. It's just like a no brainer, you know? Right, well put, well put. Yeah. I just got to say, I guess to make a real estate reference, it's like, you know, you know, uh, not working with the buyer's agent, going looking at houses and not knowing what you're looking at doing, negotiating contracts, purchase. You would do all that to save the money that you're not paying for anyways. Right. Right? It's kind of built into the cost of this uh, real estate transaction. So great. That's awesome. Either way, you're paying it. 
And I mean, if anyone watched this and they're going to have to watch it probably a second or third time because their mind's blown, I will be watching it. Right? You you guys are worth uh, every penny and more knowing how to do that. And Craig, like, like a Jedi, like a, <laughs> a Yoda, a Jedi getting in there, right? A Yeti, I just made a new word. Uh, that's how much my mind's blown from it. So that's a cool. Yet, a Yeti, it's a cup, you know? It's, it's a, a yeah, right? I'm sending it's you close. one. Yeti, Yeti's close, Yeti. Yeti's close, Yeti. <laughs> well, I hope all of you, you know, cool. enjoyed this experiment. That's exactly what this was, a, a complete and utter experiment. And I, I thought it was awesome. I just loved the dialect going back. And That's I great. can tell some of you really enjoyed it by the sheer amount of messaging in the chats. It was crazy. Uh, but with, with all good things, they must come to an end. So I'm going to let Stephen close us out for this epic wealth webinar. And before we do that, Jesse, thanks for your time today. Sorry, gotta unmute. Thank you guys so much. This was awesome. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, Jesse. Thanks, man. And we'll see you Monday. Monday, Jesse will be on with his partner, uh, Private Money Clubs, Money Club Mondays, 1 p.m. Eastern. And we will be uh, talking about some Jesse, uh, some deals that Jesse has available right now for private money. So that's going to be a great conversation. Learn a little bit more about you guys' um, internal real estate business. So I know you got a lot going on. So, and you guys have a really cool business model. So can't wait to learn more about that and uh, highly yeah. recommend everybody join that. For the rest of you, uh, you know, all this is great education. It's, it's great to understand all this. The power is in taking action and implementing in your own lives. Very easy to make that happen. I posted a link over in the chat box to schedule a call with one of our money mentors. All of our money mentors are trained personally by Chris, myself, and Craig to be able to design policies specifically to fit your needs, just like we talked about today. Make sure it's right for you. Um, we'll help you get started with the application approval process. We have a whole team that assists with that. We have a concierge team that looks over to make sure things are moving forward, that nothing is missed throughout the entire process. And uh, this is becoming a well-oiled machine that we have. And we're here to help you. So use us, take advantage of us. Again, it's no cost to you whatsoever. Um, well, we're here to help however we can. Talk about policies for you. If you have a business, you own a business. Those are really interesting conversations. If you have kids, I uh, can't recommend enough starting kid policies for the kids. But let's start with one for you and we can build the banking system from there. So it all starts with that first phone call. It's mentors.beyourownbanker.com to schedule a call with our team. And then if you enjoyed what you saw today, or maybe you already have a policy. Maybe you're looking for additional strategies, alternative investing, uh, different ways to control your wealth. Maybe you have some retirement dollars, an old 401k, IRAs, and you're like, well, what do I do with that money? I can't run that through whole life. We got that fixed for you. We got that solved for you as well. We have our world-famous three-day Money School Essentials training coming up uh, just next weekend, March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's fully recorded all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, it's Chris leading the charge during the three days, doing what Chris does best, which is educating and, and teaching what's going on with this economy, how you can position yourself right now, exactly what to do. And then we're bringing on a bunch of our um, experts, friends, people from masterminds that we know to educate on topics that we aren't the experts on. You know, we're the experts on controlling wealth, and private money and real estate investing. We bring on experts to teach you all the rest of it. So tax strategies, eliminate the wealth killers. So that's three full days. It's 197 bucks. If you don't love it, we'll give you your money back. No problem. It's the best three days, the best $197 you'll ever spend. I guarantee it. So I put the link over there. Just use the, the discount code, all one word, capital virtual discount. You'll get a hundred bucks off. So it takes it from 297 to 197. And... That's my pitch. Thanks for everybody being here today. And uh, we look forward to working with all of you. So Craig, Jesse, Chris, thanks guys. Thank you. You have 4.30 for Ask Me Anything. Thank you guys. See you. See ya. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.